I, I want to share with you guys uh, our like expertise and what we did on uh, on uh, on, um, on some experience and mm -hmm. what we, sh we should avoid to do. And uh, I wanted to start with this picture. I think that everybody knows the Toy Story. And there's something very specific with this picture. Uh, Toy Story is was the first 3D animated movie. So it means that before this was animated. But uh, uh, in 1995, they started building some 3D models, put them in a scene, on a, in a virtual scene, mm -hmm. and started um, doing rendering on I every single picture. So you put highly de detailed models in, into the, the scene and start rendering uh, those process. Also, uh, I always do a comparison between those two pictures. On the left side, we have Avatar. And on the right side, we have Lara Croft, the famous video game that everybody knows. Um, and when we talk about 3D, you know, it's, uh, <laughs> it's, it's there, are there are several kind of 3D. That's not only uh, one person doing 3D. Uh, there's, um, how can I say, um, in, mo in movies, for example, you have this uh, rendering capacities. So um, I will maybe skip to the next slide. It will be easier to explain. Um, on the left side, you have the level of detail that you need to have on a movie scene. So you create high-quality high 3D models. Uh, you put them. You put a lot of them. It it counts many uh, millions of polygons. Mm -hmm. So very very heavy scene, and you just and you just you. <laughs> it's already complex to do it, but you you render it uh, and you send it to farm the rendering, and you mm -hmm. end up with a movie in the end. In the in video games, it's completely di different because you're not, uh, you have many ways of living your experience. It's not watching the movie. You can do whatever you want in the limit that's uh, around mm -hmm. you. So for this, uh, you cannot have uh, eye rendering models in 3D because you're going to have performance problem. Mm. And to solve this problem, uh, we see on the right side of the picture. So the beautiful La Lara Croft that we saw before looks more like this in 3D. So there's, it's another technique, and you will need to uh, work the texturing and do it uh, the more realistic possible to uh, to compensate this lack of polygons. And that's uh, that's a secret in uh, in uh, video games. It's you have very low poly polygons uh, models, but you work a lot more uh, the texture. So I wouldn't say that. Uh, uh Movies, 3 D designers are better than uh, video games. It's just other technique, and uh, mm. uh, it's and I today I didn't even s I don't know any good three uh, D uh, good three D designer in both uh, both sectors. So it's whether you specialize in video games or in movies. So that's a that's a big uh, big difference. I wanted to also to talk to you about how you create three D models, and there are so so many techniques. If uh, today we want to recreate this studio in 3D, we can ask our designer to come, do the measurement, and uh, recreate them on a, on a 3D software. Uh, but you can also take an uh, uh, end scanner and scan the environment. You will have some point clouds, and from this you create a 3D model. And then I, I, I want to talk also about the, the new Apple 12 Pro. Why I talk about this one? Because they lately, and I don't know if you know it, they integrate a laser scanning inside the, the really? phone. So it's, it's, uh, it allows you to have a, a first scanning experience. So let's be honest, the level of detail is not millimeters. But if you want to scan the, uh, an environment or an object and then preview it in augmented reality, it works. And it's, uh, it's quite impressive to have this technology in such, such a small phone. Um, Another technique, uh, so for those who know 3D, they go they're going to say it's not 3D, and I know it, <laughs> but uh, it's uh, 360 videos. Mm. Um, so it's obviously not 3D, but uh, if I'm in this studio and I want to give uh, a short preview of how the studio looks like, I'm going to put a, 3D a 360 camera and then start shooting and put it in, in VR and you can look around you. So it's good for... Uh, the, those lo lockdown period it was very nice because mm. I travel around the world you know you could you could see the beautiful landscape but I'm not saying that there is one technique better than the other one it's just uh, different it depends on the usage you have behind and uh, 360 videos 
are very good and very fast to have a quick content. Mm -hmm. But if you want to move into the scene, it's not possible. So, um, so that uh, at this point, you need to have a three D model. Mm. So, if someone wants to, you know, start experimenting, maybe best to start with the three hundred and sixty model, just so they know. It, it, uh, I would recommend this, and I, uh, I would also recommend to any people who want to start in VR, the first thing to do is to buy an headset, and try all the experience possible. And I would, and this makes, <laughs> thank you, it makes a perfect link to what I wanted mm -hmm. to say uh, after. But I, I gonna, oops, can this work? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So in the uh, in this slide, we we're talking about interaction, mm -hmm. and you will notice that uh, in entertainment we we made um, I think more than five thousand person try our solution, and we. We even did one with Doppler at the time. It was, uh, <laughs> it was a, a funny one where you are in a lift. Uh, you go at 100 meters of height. The doors will open. You have to walk on this plank. So it, and you, you do one or two meters on this plank, and you fall down. Mm. And, and it was like a, a crazy experience. But what I want to do it, uh, say is when I see a lot of VR experience, people tend to have complex interaction. You know, so like uh, on left picture, when you have to click on different menus on your hand, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I, if you're talking to a gamer, it's okay. But if you want to do professional training, and I'm taking again the example of uh, hospital or industries, people who are not used to, to, uh, to play with v VR, you have to keep it as simple as possible. And the, the only thing we do, we work with two hands, and you, j and you do everything with those two hands. Um, even something which was, which is, which sounds very easy to understand, like teleport, you know? Mm. I just click there and teleport on this way. We, we, uh, we were naive to believe that everybody would uh, use teleportation very easily. Actually, it's more complex than we think, but because not everybody is used to be in a 3D world, so they can sometimes hard to project themselves, and I saw so many cases that you put them in a room uh, and they teleport and they will always be stuck in a corner or things like this. So mm. it's, um, it's, really com it's really complex. So in every of our professional solution, we, we stick to two, those two ends that you have in your hand and you do, you do um, experience uh, in the radius of around you. So I would say one meter, one meter 30 or 50 and maximum. Mm. And to <laughs> to answer your question from from before, um, the user experience it's um, I would say it's the most important thing in VR. Um, you can have the best developer in the world, you can have the best graphic designer in the world. If you don't think cor correctly the user experience, it's very complex to have a, a good a, a good uh, a good experience. And I would uh, also mention that. Um, when you're building a user experience for mobile device, I'm not saying it's easy, but you at least you are sure when you <laughs> when you have your your mobile phone mm -hmm. that people will at least click some somewhere on this screen, you know. Right. But when you are in VR, it's much more complex to think what they will be able to do because in VR you're able to do to go anywhere you want. Mm. You can go do whatever you want, and if there's a scene launching on your left and you, you prefer to play with the cat on the right, <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, you cannot avoid this. People do what they want in VR. So you have to think every kind of um, and every type of scenarios sure. to be sure that uh, they don't miss anything and they live and the, uh, that everybody lives the same experience and they, they reach the goal that you want. Mm. So, um, and, and how long does it take to, you know, come up with all of the possibilities and make sure that you have every, you know, because there could be infinite, you know. It, it could be infinite, but that's some that there's some way in your scenarios to avoid and to be sure that people don't have access at content at certain point mm -hmm. or to limitate on uh, or simply not mo uh, modelize what's behind you because if mm -hmm. if you put something beautiful and you know <laughs> something very strange in VR when people put their headset on the first reflex they have they look behind I don't don't ask me why it's always like this <laughs> it's interesting the okay it's the first reflex so. That's why you need you don't when you build a VR experience and there's nothing to do behind, just 
show nothing. Dark, no, mm. no show, but sure, we sure. should nobody uh, stick and uh, watch uh, watch what's uh, what's behind. And um, yeah. Oh wow. So yeah, the so thinking about all this scenario, and it's the the key. And um, I would say without doing a game design document. So that's what we do when we start a project. We do. Uh, we think about the lighting, about the, the experience. We, it's like a full game design mm -hmm. where everything is written down and you see all the possibilities. And then after this, you start developing. That's, mm. that's, how, we, that's how we do. So it may, it's a good way to be also to match with your customer need also. And mm -hmm. then after you, you launch the production. So, uh, uh, but if, uh, yeah, it's just to give you an idea for light experience, uh, I would say quick experience, it's between 25 and 50 pages of game design document. So and we, that's a lot. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot. And uh, with uh, diagrams and everything that you can uh, see on the, on the picture. And uh, for biggest, bigger projects, it's, it can go between 200 and 300 pages uh, where you need everything to be mentioned in it. Otherwise, you will, you will have problem at the end of uh, mm. the experience. So it's, uh, and as if guys want to launch in, uh, in VR, it's such new, so you don't have this uh, many years of background of people using it professionally. So mm -hmm. yeah, it's uh, it's exciting. I it's think, super yeah. exciting because it every day is uh, is new and um, yeah, it's uh, well, not bad. Yes, so let's uh, yes, that's it. Mm. Okay, great. Thanks, Matt. Uh, we'll see if there's any more questions. Uh, for Matt here from uh, Virtual Rangers. Oh yeah, we have a few comments. Uh, okay, this is interesting. This is also from uh, Akos again. And he's talking about a personal computer uh, virtual reality. Yeah. So um, he he's talking about the headsets. Uh, there's one called Vive Pro, Vive Pro, yeah. Vive Pro, yeah. yeah. Uh, Valve Index, HD yes. Reverb, um, and it looks like he's speaking about the price. So, I mean, what? How do you feel about the pricing? Like, will they, if we're getting more and more of these, you know, newer technologies, will the price keep staying super high, or yeah. what do you think? No, that's first of all, thank you, thank you, Arcos, for your knowledge in VR. And uh, I didn't talk about all the headsets on the market, obviously, because it will be there's so many of them. But I, w I wanted to use the most common one. Uh, but the prices, um, if I had to talk about the range of prices, few hundred euros, you can have already a standalone uh, mm -hmm. headset. So, and our idea, and you have much more expensive headset, like one thousand, uh, hundred, uh, one thousand two hundred. And where you need a computer behind, so mm -hmm. <laughs> and you it's not light computers, it's heavy computers. Mm. So you know, uh, and if you if you want to do mass training, for example, mm -hmm. train uh, fifty person in in a, in a row, if you have to invest in headset computer fifty times, mm, uh, yeah. you don't have maybe uh, for some of my customers they won't have any budget anymore to develop the scenario. So mm -hmm. uh, I would say we pr we have the ph philosophy of using uh, accessible technology, mm -hmm. few hundred euros, make, <laughs> and that, that's the complex part, make the full training mode fit into this little headset uh, in the end. Mm. And then, uh, yeah, then we work uh, this way. This allows you to have a mass deployment of, uh, of mm -hmm. uh, headset. I remember that Walmart, they, uh, they used to train with Oculus Go, uh, more than 17,000 people uh, with VR headset. So it was a uh, no. They they wow. they <laughs> been they done well in uh, VR training. Yeah. Sure, sure, yeah. But uh, yeah, the cost is um, it will improve and it will. Um, uh, but I think we will still stay in those range of 300, 400 euros for uh, VR standalone headset and uh, 800 to 1,500 to mm -hmm. uh, for more complex headset that needs a uh, wire to be plugged uh, on your computer. I see, okay. That's a range of price, I would say. It doesn't count every headset. I know there are some much more expensive than this, but if I have to stay in a good average, I would say this. Yeah. All right, okay. And uh, we have one last question. It's from uh, Evgeny, and he's asking, and I think it's a pretty good question, what skills do you need to be a good VR developer? 
<laughs> so if you want to be a good VR developer, the first skill you need to have is to get yourself whatever headset you want and to, as I said before, try every experience possible in the market to see all the interaction. But that's not enough. Before starting, what you need to do is just put the headset on your friends, <laughs> kids, grandma, grandpa, to see how people will react and how it's um, and how how do they respond to those uh, VR experience? That's the first thing to do, and it will give you a huge user experience. Mm -hmm. And with this user experience, rather you you are you are more techie guy and you more de on the developer side. Just mm. and there are two beautiful platform, and I know some there are some default, of course. But if you work with Unity or Unreal, it will give you easy access to those technology, really easy. And I'm not saying that. Again, Unity is better than Unreal. I know that it's a it's a big fight between <laughs> the, those two. <laughs> I'm not saying this. Just take the one you are the most user uh, that's the more user friendly for you. Mm. That's uh, that's that's the way. And for if you want to start building 3D, uh, 3D uh, that's a skill. If you don't have the vision in 3D, that's very complex. So if you want to try, just download a 3D software. That's uh, mm. uh, that's Blender. Blender. It's free open source and you can it's not easy to uh, to to manipulate in the beginning but there's so much tutorial on the web uh, that mm -hmm. will help you to create 3d parts little development and then you and with a great user experience you can already start your your um, your first vr experience and if you want to skip the 3d part you said you mentioned it before just use a 3d 60 360 camera mm -hmm. and yeah you will have access to those uh, those content mm. okay interesting and I actually have one more question. Um, so, you know, what do you see happening with VR, AR in, let's say, the you know, next two to three years? Because mm -hmm. it, it seems, and we were mentioning this before, that, you know, this is all, you know, come into our lives in the last 10 years or so. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just in a snap, you know, it's, you know, with the examples that you were showing, um, we see it on billboards, we see it, you know, wherever we look for it. So, I mean, what's going to happen next? Uh, I don't. Uh, I'm not good in predictions, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I can guess uh, already, and that's what what will happen. I think 90% um, of the uh, chance it will happen. It's we have um, this. No, it's not a fight, but it's a comparison between augmented reality and virtual reality, and what's already. So there's some solution on the market coming in, but there's it's going to be it's going to be called. And there's many definition of this. It's the mixed reality. It's something that will combine. A good immersion in the world with overlaying. I would say, like, I would be. You go in a uh, inner city. You just overlay and you change the uh, change the the decor. You say. Uh, <laughs> I'm forgetting now. <laughs> yeah, you, you ju just uh, change the environment around mm, you. Okay. And so that that uh, that will be the next step. It's, it will be mixed reality. So really mixing what's existing. Overlaying with some uh, full new information and uh, mm -hmm. being merged in, uh, in other worlds, but that's mixed reality. But before this, we need to wait that uh, AR glasses come back to the market again. Mm -hmm. So it will, I think we have to wait until 2023 to, be okay. to have uh, AR glasses and VR assets will improve. And that in two or three years, we're going to maybe have a technology that's going to merge and be something that can be used and easily and produce content easily that's mm. the idea and do you think like when like if they do these uh, mixed reality glasses would that make the vr and ar the vr one like obsolete compared to this or would the vr still have its perks that are would be better i think in the five to ten coming years uh, <laughs> this won't exist anymore it will be mm. something lighter it was so it's part of the process you know technology evolves so quickly and uh, uh, it will be uh, it will evolve but it will still have maybe have some some uh, something to put on uh, on your head or mm -hmm. even lenses you know there's uh, sure there's, uh, there's this famous tv show that <laughs> if you look the black mirror they, they will show you <laughs> everything that can happen with those technologies so uh, mm, yeah oh so. very very fascinating wow thank you matt <laughs> thank you uh i'll see you one last time if anyone has any other questions for matt uh Actually, it's a little, uh, it's a comment that goes back into Evgeny's question about being a good VR developer. 
uh, and it's Akos again saying uh, 3D mathematics, um, trigonometry, and then the yeah, understanding of Unity, Unreal, uh, C plus, these kinds of things. C sharp, so yes. Um. C sharp and C plus, yes. That's, mm -hmm. that's, that's the skills, precise skills in that way. If you want more information, I can give you a mm -hmm. skill I can give. Okay. Okay, great. Um, well, thank you, Matt, again. Thank you, Chris. And uh, now we'll move on to uh, Bruno Zamberlin. Uh, he's joining us remotely. Bruno is the, the founder, the chief scientist, and also the CEO of Hypersurfaces. If you've checked already, we've uh, actually shared one of his previous TEDx talks that he gave uh, talking about his company, Hypersurfaces. And tonight, he's going to speak to us a little bit more about that. How are you doing, Bruno? Okay, great. All right, so while we wait, we can give a, a little more into, uh, I think there was actually one more question okay, that's here. <laughs> ah. We have one minute, so let's, one, yeah. <laughs> let's yeah. go for the last question. And this is going to, uh, all right, I can't see the, the username, but it goes into what's going to happen into the future. So yeah. what's going to be preferred, hand tracking or controllers? Oh, very, very good question. Uh, and actually, this asset that you you can, and it's very 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 good question, because this asset that you see standalone, it has controllers. So very, and what we do when we build a VR experience, we just ask people to click on trigger. It's the maximum mm. interaction that we ask to non, uh, with uh, people with no no expertise in VR. Mm -hmm. But with this asset, you can already take them off, and you have this hand tracking, which was. When I first saw this hand tracking, I was like, okay, it will be like a, like a toy, it won't work. But actually, mm -hmm. it's really impressive. You, really see, you don't need your remotes, you see your hands, and you can pick, grab objects. It's like really fluid and intuitive. Mm -hmm. And that obviously, and that's very good, that's why I said it's a very good question, because even in a few months or the few coming years, this controller will uh, totally disappear, 100% sure. Yeah. Mm. And then someone also commented, uh, haptic gloves. Is that something... Uh Aptic gloves, yes. So uh, the first aptic glove I saw uh, was uh, maybe 10 years ago. Um, I, I would say I'm always thinking about mass development, mass deployment. Mm -hmm. These aptic gloves, they're, they're on the, so maybe correct me if I'm wrong, but on the market, there's no really final product product release. So it's still in prototype, uh, pro mm -hmm. prototyping. And it's these aptic gloves, they react with, uh, they have sensors, so if you grab an object in the mm -hmm. in the, the scene, you will have really the feeling of uh, grabbing an oh object. Wow. So that's it's totally crazy, and I tried some, but it's heavy installation, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, when we were doing mass training, uh, you were using your headset, 15 minutes, mm -hmm. you put products on it to make it clean, and then right. you pass it to the next person. If you have to share uh, install gloves for three or four minutes, and then you know it's it's not automatically compatible and uh, mm. the idea and it's it's still quite ex expensive so the idea was just to, to stick with um, with uh, those um, hand tracking or remote controls sure sure okay good all right so uh, now we'll head into Bruno uh, as I mentioned he is the uh, CEO chief scientist and founder of hypersurfaces uh, Bruno can you hear us Can you hear me? One, two, three. Chuck. Okay. Bruno, can you hear us? Yes. yes, yes, yes. Okay. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay, perfect. Yeah, can you? Okay, so yes, yeah, so Bruno is, um, as I mentioned, uh, works for Hypersurfaces. He, is, um, he had previously spoken at many, many events, including the TEDx talk that I had mentioned. And uh, now he'll give us his presentation on Hypersurfaces. Yes, can you hear me okay? Yes. Yes. Yes, all right, fantastic.